Hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to strengthen your shoulder so you can develop more power on your forehand and reduce injury risk. And this is gonna be especially important if you're trying to develop a modern technique. So I'm gonna be taking you through this program. I'm gonna explain why you're doing each exercise, how to do the exercises, and then how to structure the program. I'm also gonna give you specific strength targets, so minimums that I recommend in order to play safely and with maximum performance benefits. Now this is something I had to do within my own game. I'm naturally a right-handed player, but I've had to stop playing with my right arm because I injured myself in a mountain might crash. I'm now relearning to play left-handed, and at the start, when I was trying to develop my forehand, I ended up in a lot of pain simply because my shoulder wasn't strong enough or stable enough or safe enough to do what I was trying to do. So the program that I'm gonna show you today is the program that I use to work on my own shoulder to help stabilize things and allow me to develop a pretty decent forehand with my left hand. So hopefully you find the video helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you could give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, it's much appreciated if you could do that as well. Let's start by very quickly looking at Alcaraz's forehand so I can explain what muscles we're gonna be working on and why we're gonna be working on them. So. Hopefully you're familiar with forehand biomechanics already, but it's always gonna start with a good unit turn. And what we need for a good unit turn, we've got the pelvis pointing to the side, we've got loading in the outside or back leg, we've got the torso rotated a little bit further than the pelvis. So we're loading the outside and back leg so we can drive through the leg to initiate the swing. We're rotating the torso so that we can pre-stretch the torso muscles to help contribute to the power that we're gonna get from rotation. And then what we're gonna have is the hip firing, so he's gonna drive through his leg his hip is gonna rotate forwards. A fraction of a second after that, his torso is gonna rotate forwards. So that is gonna bring him into the, the racket lag position. So in this racket lag position, we've got stretch across the shoulder. We've got a couple of movements that happen. So we've got the chest and shoulder being stretched here. And we've also got external rotation of the shoulder and supination or external rotation of the forearm. So we've got all those things occurring because then as he comes through to contact, he's then gonna reverse all that. So he's gonna fire with the chest and the shoulder and the shoulder is gonna internally rotate and the forearm is gonna pronate. And those are really gonna to help to give him a lot of the racket head speed. Now, what's important is that our muscles are strong enough in order to be able to handle this load. Now, normally people's shoulder muscles and chest muscles are pretty strong, so we don't need to worry about that. What we do need to worry about is a muscle, that a smaller muscle on the inside, kind of the inside of the shoulder blade, our internal rotator. This gets placed under a lot of load and stretch as you go into this racket lag position. And if it isn't strong enough, it isn't stable enough, it can be a major cause of injury, and it's also gonna prevent you from generating enough racket head speed and power. So we're gonna be doing an exercise to strengthen the internal rotators. We're also going to do a couple of exercises focused on stabilizing the back of the shoulder, because as our Karaz comes through and decelerates, in this position, his shoulder is now internally rotated and as he internally rotates that places a lot of load on the external rotator muscles at the back of the shoulder and if the external rotator muscles aren't strong they can be prone to injuries and your brain is pretty smart if it knows things aren't strong it's not going to allow you to create mac uh, maximum racket head speed as a protective mechanism so we need to strengthen the external rotators and then we also need to strengthen some of the muscles uh, that help to retract the shoulder blade or pull the shoulder blade back. So obviously you can't see them here because he's facing forwards, but they're on the back of the shoulder blade and they're the, the scapular retractors. So it's gonna be a three exercise program, one for the internal rotators, one for the external rotators, and one for the scapular retractors. And by strengthening these muscles, it'll let you more efficiently create power and reduce injury risk. The first exercise in the program is gonna be the trap three raise. This is an exercise that I learned from an amazing strength and conditioning coach called Charles Poliquin. So it strengthens your lower trap muscles and scapular retractors, the muscles that pull the shoulder blades back and down. The names don't matter so much though. What does matter is that you understand the technique that you're gonna try and use. So you can see the setup. I'm resting on something with my head resting on my arm. I'm then pulling my shoulder blade back. I'm trying to squeeze my shoulder blade back, hold it in position, and then raise the dumbbell 
out to about 45 degrees, keeping my arm completely straight. I'm then trying to lower the weight slowly, and then when I get to the bottom, I'm resetting things. Now in this top position, you should be able to see your ear underneath your arm, so if you're getting it high enough, that's what will happen. And as you're doing it, you want to be feeling the muscles behind the shoulder blade or at the back of the shoulder blade. That's the area that we're concentrating on strengthening. Now the speed that I'm lifting at is important. I'll explain this again in the program, but I'm going to be pulling the shoulder blade back, lifting the dumbbell powerfully, then I'm going to try and hold it for a second in that top position, really squeezing these muscles, and I'm going to be lowering it down for around three seconds under control, and then repeating the process. So this is the technique. You're supposed to feel it behind the shoulder blade, and then the speed is going to be very important. For the second exercise, we're doing a dumbbell internal rotation. So this one is a much more simple exercise, but we're going to be doing two different variations. So this is the basic variation, and I'm going to show you a slightly more advanced variation as well. But we're strengthening the internal rotator muscles. As you can see, I'm lying on the floor. I've got my arm bent to about 90 degrees, my shoulder to about 90 degrees, and I'm just internally rotating my shoulder. So I'm contracting my internal rotators to lift the weight and then slowly lowering it back down. Now, here, I'm lowering it slowly for around three or four seconds and lifting it quickly. So this is the way that I would do the basic version. But for the advanced version, the tempo and the speed is going to change a little bit. As you can see, I've got my shoulders propped up, and this is going to allow me to externally rotate further. So this is going to place the internal rotators under more stretch. So I'm using this to help improve my range of motion as well as my strength, because I was very limited in the range. It was causing problems on my forehand, but it was also causing problems on my serve as well. But for this advanced variation, the tempo is going to be a little bit different. So you're going to lower for around three seconds, but then I'm going to pause in this stretch position for you know one to two seconds, and then you're going to lift the weight quickly from the stretch position before lowering it again. So I recommend that you start out with the basic version first, make sure that you're comfortable with it, and then when you're a little bit stronger, then work towards the more advanced variation where you can try and increase the range as well. Now I also do one other slight variation of this where I've got my elbow in towards my side. Again, I do this to increase the range of motion, and this one has also been really helpful for both serve, uh, the forehand power and to improve the racket drop on my serve. The final exercise is going to be a dumbbell external rotation. This is another one of the exercises that I learned from Charles Poliquin, and I'm actually going to give you some ideal targets to aim for in a moment when we talk about the uh, the program structure itself. But you can see the setup, very simple. I'm just seated on the floor, I'm resting my elbow on my knee, I'm lowering the weight slowly for around four seconds, I'm lifting the weight quickly. Now when you lower the weight, it's important that you lower it slowly, but you want to keep your shoulder still, and you're going to lower it as far as you can, so you're going to use the maximum range of motion that you've got in your external rotators. So here I'm stopping at the point where I can't go any further. I could go further if I allowed my shoulder blade to lift up, but that's not what we want. We want to keep the shoulder blade completely still and just create this movement from the shoulder. So lowering into the stretch position and then contracting quickly. Fantastic exercise for stabilizing the back of the shoulder, increasing stability and forehand power. Now you know why you're doing the exercises and how to do them. Let's talk about how to structure the program and I'm going to give you some minimum strength targets to aim for. So three exercises, A, B, and C. First exercise is the dumbbell trap three raise. Three sets, six to eight repetitions, three, one, one, one tempo. And what that means is you're going to be lowering the weight for three seconds. So the first number is always the time taken to lower the weight. The second number is the pause after lowering the weight. So it's going to take us a second to reset the shoulder blade. Third number, time taken to lift. And whenever it says one second for the lifting, that means you're just going to lift quickly, but under control with good technique. The fourth number is the pause after lifting. So in this exercise, we're squeezing the shoulder blade and holding at the top for a second. You're going to be doing 30 seconds rest after each side. So you'll do the right arm, rest for 30 seconds, do the left arm, rest for 30 seconds, back to the right arm, and so on, until you've done all three sets. Now as a minimum strength requirement, what I recommend is that you can do eight repetitions with 10% of your body weight at this speed. So the speed that you lift at is really important. You can do 
eight reps really quickly and it'll do something but it won't do quite what we're wanting it to and it certainly won't work in terms of the strength requirements. So you wanna be lifting and lowering under control and you wanna be able to do eight repetitions with 10% of your body weight at that speed. So for me, 200 pounds, the maths is easy. I'm gonna be using a 20 pound dumbbell for eight repetitions. If you really wanna bulletproof things, get to the point where you can do three sets with this rest at this speed of eight repetitions with 10% of your body weight. That way you'll have strength and endurance and you'll be injury proof or very resistant to injury throughout a long match. Second exercise, dumbbell internal rotation, three sets. We're going slightly higher in the number of repetitions. Now in terms of the speed, if you're doing the advanced variation, lower for three, pause for two in the stretch position, lift quickly and then lower. If you're doing the basic variation where you're stopping on the floor, just lower it down, lift it back up. So down for around four seconds and then lift for a second. Again, resting 30 seconds between arms. For this one, I like to go higher on the number of reps. So minimum requirements, 15 reps with 10% of your body weight done at this speed. But I personally, for my own body, found that I got better results going for 12% of my body weight. So getting up to around 25 pounds for 15 rep repetitions at this speed. And again, if you really wanna bulletproof things, being able to do that for three sets, is gonna give you greater endurance. Third exercise, dumbbell external rotation. Three sets, eight to 10 reps. Tem this tempo, so lowering for four seconds under control, holding in the stretch position for a second, lifting quickly. Again, the rest is gonna stay the same. And for this one, again, we wanna be thinking 10% of your body weight for 10 reps. And if you can do three rounds of that with this rest, that's gonna be a really good sign that you're gonna be protecting yourself from injury. So that's kind of how the program functions. Each time you lift, you want to be working to try and add a little bit more in terms of the weight or an additional repetition or two. So you're always trying to progressively increase your strength. It takes time to build it. You know, eight to 12 weeks is a good length of time to work at this program and you'll notice significant and benefits. But really, because we've got minimum strength requirements, I would keep going until I've met those strength requirements. And then once I've met the strength requirements, I would just do a very similar program, but just less repetitions or less often, because we, then we could just maintain the strength, because we do want a certain amount of strength to be able to play as safely as possible. Now, before I close out the video, I wanna let you know about some additional help that's available to you if you're serious about becoming a better player, because something that doesn't really get mentioned on most coaching videos is that there are physical requirements if you want to play high-level tennis. Here, I'm talking about developing strength, which is very important. But I find that for most players, lack of strength isn't the biggest thing that holds them back. The biggest thing that holds them back is their skill, their eye to hand and eye to foot coordination. Most players aren't able to read where the ball's going quickly enough, which causes them to prepare late and prevents them from setting up in the right position. A lot of players hit the ball late and that's to do with the visual side of things, but it's also to do with the coordination side of things. If you want to use high level technique, if you want to have ATP forehands and backhands, it requires a tremendous amount of coordination in order to sequence the kinetic chain correctly and to be able to make the adjustments to deal with the different types of shot that you have to when you're playing a match. It all comes down to the skill component. The good news is you can actually improve that using brain-based training. And that's the main thing that I teach tennis players how to do. If you'd like to learn more about using brain-based training to improve your skill, I've created a class that's gonna teach you all about it. I'll place a link up there and I'll place a link down in the description so you can watch this class and start to understand a little bit more about how it works. It's also gonna teach you a little bit about how my program is structured and how I work with players, if that's something that you would like to explore further. Okay, so that class is available to you. This is the program, start working on it. It takes a period of time to develop strength. If you've got any questions about the program, any comments, any feedback about today's video, I would love you to leave them down below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, it's appreciated if you could do that. And of course, give me the thumbs up and I'll catch you next time.